Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the process colours and everything behind this beautiful Barn Owl drawing. And everything that I have used for this tutorial is listed in the material section of the description below. And if you want the full real-time version then you can find it over on my website as part of my Club Puffin subscription. So I'm going to leave the link to that below if you want to check that out as well. But let's get started into this tutorial. Okay, so if you've watched any of my tutorials before you know that I really love to start with the eyes because I find that adding in the eyes just really adds the soul and the essence of the subject so to begin with I started uh, outlining with some dark sepia and then just filled in all of the dark part the eyes on this owl like weren't too glassy and I didn't really have too much detail so I pretty much just added in some warm greys some burnt ochres and um, other kind of warmy colours but the majority of it was just made up with some dark sepia and some really hard pressure to try and fill that in and I used a white gel pen to add in some of the highlights of the eyes as well um, added in a tiny tiny little bit of olive green yellowish into the highlight um, just to kind of add that kind of like glassy look that you often find and then just moved on to adding in a few of the feathers around the outside of the eye and then adding in the second eye in the same way as well the second eye had a little bit more of like a reflection along the bottom edge of the eye so for that I just added down some white pencil just use a Prismacolor white and then just shaded over some really light colors like some light flesh and some a little bit of black and again those burnt ochre colors as well and some warm grays just to kind of create a little bit of reflection and then just added in some white gel pen as well. Now for the feather texture on the owl it's pretty much just adding down a really light base and then adding in some pretty much a lot of different colours. So the majority of the colours I used were like green gold, dark naples ochre, burnt ochre, raw umber, some light colours like light yellow ochre, nougat, that kind of thing. And to create the kind of really light appearance on the feathers it was just a base of the warm grey one. I added in a few little strokes of warm grey two and I added in some light flesh and some cream into that to try and create that kind of luminous look on the owl. The beak was pretty much just made up of some light flesh colours, so some nice pinks and then adding in some walnut browns and some dark sepias into the shadows and like the little nostrils on the beak as well. And to keep the smooth appearance of the beak I just blended with a white pencil and then just kept layering up the colours, making sure that everything was really nice and smooth and blended and just working in like a shading motion and keeping everything in one direction. Um, maybe even adding in a few little circular motions with the pencil as well just to try and keep everything really nice and smooth so you've got that comparison of the smooth beak against the kind of ruffled feather look. The feathers on the face as you can see on the image here you've got some really light feathers on the right hand side and then darker feathers on the left hand side so I kind of just added some warm grey one and warm grey two as a base on the right hand side to keep it really nice and light and then just introduced a few darker colours into the feathers on the left hand side so using some walnut brown to kind of create the shadow between some of the little individual feather sections and all that kind of thing. The real difficult part on this owl was adding in that kind of torpy, yellowy, kind of ochery colour on the head and of course all of those weird kind of speckled markings. That is the real issue with this. And this is a really really simple process actually to kind of create this as you can see what I'm doing with the feathers around the face here I'm adding in all of the darker feathers first so all of those darker shadows where you can kind of see in between all of the different little feather sections I'm using a walnut brown pencil and some dark sepia as well to just add in all of those darker sections I've added a base of warm grey one down first as well to make the colours a little bit more slick on top and then just go in and fill in your mid tones so the mid tones I pretty much used were as I said before like what I used in some of the feathers some dark naples ochre some burnt ochre some raw umber that was a real key one for this some burnt sienna nougat all of that kind of stuff and um, using some brighter colors where you've got a lot of the light hitting the owl as well as you can see 
coming into the center of the face where you've got some brighter feathers I'm using a lot more of those lighter colors to so using some more burnt ochres that green gold was a really key one for where the lights kind of hitting the face there and just keeping everything really nice and light and yellow and trying to stay away from muddying colors like a lot of grays so just keeping to pure yellows and then adding in some of the darker tones with some walnut brown and you've got this kind of grey effect going on um, as you come towards the top of the head and then it comes like around the left hand side of this owl, this reference picture. It's from Pixabay by the way and I'll link it down in the description in case you want to have a go yourself. And to create that kind of grey, um, like blue tone, what I actually used was a warm grey 6 and I layered it with some warm grey 2 and warm grey 1. So I put down a warm grey 1 first as a base, then I went over really really lightly with the warm grey 6 and then I blended it out with some warm grey 2 and some warm grey 1 to kind of keep it really nice and light. But I made sure that I kept all of those pencil colours really nice and light. And then you can also use like a, um, a cold grey 3 or something like that to make your life a little bit easier. But I like to use a limited palette and try and keep to that limited palette when I'm doing a tutorial. So I used a warm grey 6 and just used it really, really lightly and then blended out with um, those lighter colours and a little bit of white as well. And then on top of that area there, I just used my dark pencils to create these really kind of dark, kind of speckledy bits. I'm not exactly sure what the actual term is for the type of feather this is, but I just used some dark sepia, some walnut brown to add in those darker areas. And then as I came down towards uh, the left hand side, coming towards the bottom of the owl, I just put down a base of the warm grey one, um, some ivory as well for some of the kind of lighter areas. And then added in those dark spots and then filled in the mid-tones as well. And then after you've filled in the mid-tones, it's a good idea to go back over some of the darker areas because I often find that when I'm adding in the dark areas first and then mid-tones, that some of your darker areas can get a little bit lost. So if you're working on something and finding that your darker areas that you put down first are getting lost, make sure that you go in and darken them up. Don't continue to add mid-tones and then find that you've lost all of those darker areas make sure you go in and darken them up first before you start losing them because otherwise you're just going to be going back on yourself and trying to find out where all those dark areas were so save yourself a job and add them in as you're adding mid-tones if you're finding that you're losing them so for the white feathers of this owl, you might think that you just need to go in and use a lot of whites and greys, but if you followed any of my white fur tutorials or the eagle eye study, the real time one on YouTube, you'll see that I don't actually use very many grey pencils and I try not to use white at all and it's actually made up of a lot of different colours. So in this owl you can see for instance that there are a lot of greens and yellows on the feathers and I've carried that through to the white feathers as well but also introduced a lot of that kind of light flesh, that peachy tone so that you can capture that light within the feather. But the white feathers are pretty much just made up of all the colours like white light is, you've got to think of it in that way and just add as many colours as you can reasonably add. Obviously you don't want to add every single colour like you don't want to add purples and blues if there aren't any showing like on the reference photo or in the background so just use your common sense and add the colours into the white feathers that you feel are necessary. So for in this case I just added in a lot of the burnt ochres, those yellows and some browns as well to create the shadows. One of the hardest parts of drawing um, feathers or an owl like this is creating that kind of really soft downy feather look. So in some areas of this, like on the face, there were kind of more um, texture, there was more of the feathers that were open and you can see the shadows in between. But on the actual body of the owl, you just had this really, really soft down and it's a little bit of a different technique. So you want to treat this more as like how we did with the beak. So you want to keep it a little bit more smooth. So you want to make sure that all of your strokes and all of your pencil motions are all kind of going in the same direction and that you try and blend it out as much as possible. But obviously you still want to keep a little bit of that texture there. So instead of blending at the very end like you would with a smooth surface like the beak, you want to make sure that you don't blend at the end and you keep some kind of texture in. So use your darker pencils to add a little bit of texture, so a few lines here and there over some of your previously blended layers. So you kind of keep that really nice soft look but you've got a little bit of texture there as well so you can identify that it's actually a feather and not like a smooth surface. 
So as you can see the feathers on the body here, you can see I'm using the same technique as what I did around the side of the face. So I've added in a base layer, this time using ivory, and then I've gone in and added my darkest feathers, this time using some raw umber to just identify some of the darker clumps and the darker areas there. And then just using the rest of my kind of mid-tone colours really, really lightly over the entire section and then blending with some lighter colours as well. So I think blending here I used some of the ivory just to keep it like really nice and soft and warm toned and didn't really blend too much like you can see I kind of kept the texture of the paper here a little bit um, but it still looks really nice and downy and soft and then you've kind of got the pencil marks from the raw umber where I've added the darker sections that kind of ident identify that it's like a feather texture and then we're just pretty much repeating the same process around the right hand side of the owl so going around the face adding in some base layers and then adding in some darker sections uh, adding in some darker markings, um, some shadows and all of that and then going back in and filling in all of the mid-tones. So here I'm using some warm grey one as a base and then going in with the dark pencils and adding in the shadows around these individual feathers and then going in with the yellows to add the mid-tones back in. The feathers on the right hand side the the right hand side was like the wing of the owl so the approach for this was pretty much the same as like going on with the chest we've got that kind of downy really soft um, flowing type of feather but there was a lot more sort of shadows on this side of the bird so to create those shadows I just mixed some of the darker yellows with some of the burnt sienna and the walnut brown to kind of create a really kind of warmer toned shadow. Whereas on the left hand side I created a kind of cooler toned shadow by mixing in some black and some warm grey and some of those more cooler toned colours. Again one of the trickiest parts on this bird was adding in those little dark kind of like eyes on the wing and you can see the technique that I've kind of approached with. I've outlined all of those eyes, left the kind of white in the middle, gone round with some dark sepia and I think I actually went round with some black as well and then I've gone back in and added all of the other texture and colours around that so then added in the base layers and then worked my way up to some darker colours again and created almost like a kind of a flicked or flecked texture on the section of the wing there. I just created that by using a, a few dots and just making some really simple marks with the pencil just creating some dots there. So that's pretty much it for this video. I really hope that you found some of these tips helpful when you're creating your own owls or feathers or any kind of subject that has similar colouring. And if you want to follow along with this particular tutorial, I'm going to leave the reference image in the description below as well so you can give it a go. This one is from Pixabay and it's free for you to use. So have a go and enjoy this one. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upload as I post new arty goodness every single Friday for you guys. Make sure you hit that notification bell as well so that you're notified as soon as the upload goes public. And that's all from me today and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!